Well, welcome. Thank you, everyone who made it in here, and sorry to those that didn't. Uh, we are streaming online as well. Uh, today, we're talking about Gateway API and our path to beta and GA. I'm Rob, and this is Nick. Good day, everyone. We are both Gateway API maintainers. Uh, before we get any further, I want to ask a few questions. Uh, first off, how many of you have used Kubernetes services to create load balancers? Anyone? Yeah. Expected okay, that would be okay. most of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyone use Kubernetes ingresses before? Okay, great, most, great. Most, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. Uh, how many of you have tried out Gateway API? Okay, a few oh. of you. Hopefully, okay, more than I thought. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, I mean, that's good. But hopefully by the end of this talk, we'll have even more of you wanting to try it out. Uh, so let's work on that. So for those of you who haven't tried it out yet, you may be wondering, what is this thing? Well. I look at it as the next generation of Kubernetes load balancing and routing APIs. Uh, why would we build a new API, right? Uh, this is a very familiar problem. We already have an ingress API. We already have a service API. Why start with a new one? Uh, well, the ingress API simply wasn't able to express advanced configurations that so many people wanted. Uh, this, the, the failures of that API led to lots of custom annotations and other things which worked, they were the best option available, but we wanted to provide a better API in Kubernetes that didn't require all those annotations. And for those of you familiar with the service API, you've seen new fields just get stuffed in over and over again, and the combination of those fields may not make sense, and it's very hard to, diff to test, to work with, to implement, all those things. So a new API hopefully offers a solution to this. We can unify load balancing configuration across L4, which was the service API, and L7, ingress. Uh, we can allow custom components to easily be added on, plugged into core resources. So extensibility is a huge part of this API. We recognize that anything we build in the core Kubernetes API system is not going to be sufficient for every use case. So we want to make it easy to extend. And finally, we want to enable some additional use cases. We're not sure what all the, these look like yet, but there's been some discussions around mesh, around egress, around policy, lots of things that this API could potentially be used for. Don't forget my nuts ideas about GRE tunnels, VPNs. Like <laughs> yeah. lots, lots of fun ideas coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so with that, uh, let's talk about our timeline and, and how we got to where we are. Uh, the last KubeCon I was at in person was KubeCon San Diego. Uh, and you see some of us there. Many of us uh, ended up becoming maintainers. Uh, Danians in the audience, I think maybe some others as well. Uh, the initial work really began at KubeCon San Diego. We had some initial brainstorming sessions, and then it took us a year, and we got V1 Alpha 1 out the door. We had so many different prototypes and many different structures of the API that we experimented with. A uh, few more minor releases, some additions, and then KubeCon EU, it was all virtual, but KubeCon EU, we presented our first overview of Gateway API at a KubeCon. Again, it was all virtual, but that was around a year ago. And this talk is really going to focus on everything that's changed since that point, so in the past year. Uh, in the past year, V1 Alpha 2 was released. That was a huge change for us. We saw it as really the, the beginning of our stable API. I know it still said Alpha, but we thought this was the API we could take to beta. And that largely ended up being true. Uh, since then, we've really been focusing on conformance tests, some new experimental features, some patch releases, just stabilizing what we have. And we're finally at a point where we're confident to go to beta. So we'll be talking about that. But let's take a few steps back and describe the API itself. Uh, if you haven't seen Gateway API before, uh, it all starts with a gateway class. A gateway class describes a kind of load balancing or proxy infrastructure. Uh, so for example, I, I work for Google, and for GKE, we're going to bundle with GKE clusters a XLB gateway class and an ILB gateway class for L7, and more to come. Uh, this is a way to describe load balancing infrastructure. Every different implementation of Gateway API will have different gateway classes that they'll support. Second, we have gateways. These represent some kind of entry point to your system. It could be a load balancer, it could be some kind of proxy configuration, but they represent some kind of entry point to your system. But really, the huge part about this API, even though it's called Gateway API, the most important part is the routes. 
we have a lot of different routes, and the routes are where the vast majority of the functionality comes from. So in this case, I'm showing HTTP route because that's our most stable, most full-featured route. That has a lot of advanced configuration in it, but you could also attach a TCP route, TLS, UDP, gRPC is coming soon. We've got a lot of different routes for different protocols, and they define different routing configuration that is protocol-specific. Uh, so you attach HTTP to your L7 load balancer. You might have an L4 load balancer that you attach TCP routing configuration to. Can I jump in there for a sec? Yeah. So um, one thing I did want to say there is um, with the, uh, I think the distinction between them is HTTP route is for terminated HTTP traffic. TLS route is for stuff where you're uh, passing through a TLS. And then TCP and UDP are for like uh, proxying TCP and UDP traffic. Yeah. Not routing, proxying. It's the distinction is important. Yep. Good point. Yeah. Great point. Okay, so this is a huge feature list. Uh, V0.5.0 refers to our upcoming release. I'd say hopefully a couple weeks from now. Uh, there's a lot in here. I'm not going to cover all of it, but suffice it to say, many of these things have not been seen in other Kubernetes APIs. This is an official Kubernetes API that supports all of this and more. Uh, so this is a big thing for Kubernetes. But you may be asking, you look at that slide, you see all these things, and you say, how on earth can this be portable? You know, we're, we're trying to build a portable API. This is a Kubernetes API. How can you promise all those features and then say it's portable? Well, unlike Ingress, unlike previous Kubernetes APIs, we've built in this concept of conformance levels. So we start with a conformance level that's called core. And that's something that we expect every implementation to handle in a consistent way and support. A good example of this is with HTTP, prefix path matching. Just about everyone can support that basic capability. Now, we also have an extended level of conformance. And that is something that we expect to be supported consistently when it can be supported. But we recognize not everyone, not every implementation can support something like uh, header modification. A lot of implementations can, but not quite everyone. So that's an example of an extended feature. And finally, we have something called custom. This is not that common in the API, but there exists a thing called regex. I, I think that is the only thing this exists for. But uh, if you're familiar with regular expressions, you're familiar that there are lots of different variations of regular expression implementations. So we can't write conformance tests that expect this specific path, this specific regex, to be matched the same way when the underlying implementation may support a different flavor of regex. So we say, OK, this is a concept that is widely understood, but we recognize there may be some variation in implementation here. So those are our conformance levels. With all that background, let's spend a little bit of time talking about what's changed in the past year. And there's a lot. Uh, first, uh, we went to V1 Alpha 2, as I mentioned. But maybe most important, we went to Gateway Networking Kate's IO API Group. What that means is we're an official Kubernetes API. That's a big distinction. Previously, we were just an experimental Kubernetes API. This status as in the Kate's API group means that uh, not only are we, Gateway API ma maintainers, reviewing every step of the API change, so are upstream API reviewers. So this goes through Nick, myself, and a few other uh, Gateway API maintainers. And then it goes up to Tim and some other uh, upstream API reviewers. Uh, that's actually the state we're in right now for v0.5.0. We're in that final set of review. Hopefully, we can get a release out soon. Uh, I'm really proud of this. We have more than 70 people that have already contributed to this API, and that number keeps on going up. And again, if you're interested, we are always looking for more contributors. Uh, and maintainers. And maintainers, yes. Uh, right now, I think uh, this number is a little out of, out of date, but we have around 15 implementations. Uh, you may have heard earlier on in KubeCon, Envoy Gateway was announced. That's based on Gateway API. Uh, there's a lot of very cool implementations, uh, and I think more on the way. And what I'm excited about, we, we already have conformance tests in place. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah, some of the graphics. So I there. wish you could see my screen. I'm not trying to do a contour pitch. This has like 12 <laughs> like, logos on my oh, screen. There you go. It's the second click. That was Whoa. The yeah. Cool. OK. Yeah. There they are. Yes. Um, anyways, uh, many <laughs> implementations are fully passing conformance tests now. Uh, we're really excited about it. Uh, the fact that we already have a pretty robust conformance suite 
means that I think we're going to have a pretty consistent experience across implementations. Okay, let's talk about what's changed. Uh, we did a thing with route ga gateway binding that we hope will simplify things. For any of you that may have looked at v1 alpha 1 before, the idea was that gateways select routes. So if you've used Kubernetes, you're familiar with the idea of a label selector. So you say, I want to select routes. I want to select routes that have a specific label. What we ended up seeing is that users would just have a creative way of doing this. Of They'd say, I want to select routes that have this gateway label on it that says prod web gateway. So basically, gateway name, uh, a weird way of attaching to a gateway. So we tried to simplify that a little bit by instead saying, hey, the routes reference the gateway. So the routes have this parent refs thing, and that points up to the gateway. And the gateway just says, here are the namespaces I trust routes from. And actually, that's kind of an important detail. A gateway can trust routes from multiple namespaces. If you've ever wanted to have your load balancing infrastructure in one namespace, and your routing configuration in another namespace, that's possible with this API. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, so we're really excited about that. Another neat thing about that parent refs field, right now, that, that is used to refer to gateways. Uh, there are some other interesting use cases here. Uh, there's a gap. We, you know, if you've heard of Kubernetes enhancement proposals, we have gateway enhancement proposals. And we have one right now that's talking about route inclusion where that parent could refer to another parent uh, and another route. We'll, we'll just see. Uh, this is still in proposal phase, uh, but there's a lot of really interesting stuff happening here. All right, let's move on to reference policy. We're talking about crossing namespace boundaries. This is a slightly different way to do it. This is for uh, some very specific instances. Uh, if you've ever had this idea in your head that I have my routing configuration here, and I want to forward to a backend in some other namespace. So I have all my routing configuration in a routing namespace, but I've got my service, I've got my app in my app namespace. This is what that's intended for. Or if you have your TLS certificates in a separate secure namespace, but you want to allow them to be referenced from somewhere else, this allows for that. So reference policy, at its core, is a resource that exists in a namespace that I own and it says, I trust references from this other namespace. So in this case, this reference policy says, I trust references from HTTP routes in the prod namespace to services in my namespace. Uh, this, this pattern is something we ran by SIG auth, SIG arch, SIG API machinery. We've, we've run it through. I think it's a good pattern, but we're very much interested in feedback here. I should hold out this little note here. We've called this reference policy, but there's a decent chance it's going to get renamed uh, because we have this whole other concept that's a little bit newer called policy, and policy is such a gen generic term, we're thinking we may rename it to something like reference grant. So don't get tied to that name. This concept, I think, is here to stay. The name may change. OK, moving on, let's talk about policy attachment. This is. That thing I mentioned, the policy, that's a really broad scope. Uh, we really want this API to be extensible. We want users to be able to plug in and build new stuff on top of our API. As much as we want to include as much as we can in the API, we recognize there are things that just don't fit. Uh, one of the things we really struggled with in our API is something like as simple as timeouts. You would not believe the variation in timeout configuration, whether you're talking to Nginx, Envoy, some cloud, they, they all have different versions of timeouts that they support, and trying to build portable configuration for that was very challenging. So instead, what we're suggesting for these kinds of things is that implementations or groups of implementations decide on a common policy that works for them. Uh, so in this case, you might have a retry policy that you could attach to a route, and a health check policy that you could attach to a specific service. There's a lot in here. But this is really defining a common pattern for extending the API. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot in here. I, I, can I just add yeah. one more thing in? I would probably say at the moment, this is a, 
a framework to be able to build extensions to the API, it's not extensions yet, right? Like yeah. we expect, we need people to build some examples of this. We haven't even built the example of the timeout one fully yet, right? So th this is very early, yeah. but like the idea here is that you can have settings that can be overridden or, um, or defaulted and stuff like that, that, that allow you to make settings at sort of a higher or a lower level. And yeah, there's a whole document. It's a very long, it took us a long time to write. I encourage you to read it if you're interested in this at all. Um, but yeah, it's because it's quite s complicated and there's uh, some serious subtleties that can be a bit tricky to explain that we just don't, do not have time to explain. Yeah, I, I'll just give a, a concrete example. For GKE, we're building an LB policy uh, that includes some of our load balancer specific policy uh, configuration that just doesn't fit in the API itself. And I imagine other vendors will have similar things. Yep. All right, so let's talk about graduating to beta. That's a big part of this talk. We finally are making it to beta, uh, yeah. but only part of it. So uh, we have uh, defined a graduation criteria uh, that involves a number of things. Uh, one of them is that we wanted to have a robust conformance test suite in place for the resources that graduate. Uh, two, we want them to be widely implemented and widely used. And we wanted to feel confident about the state of the APIs that they weren't going to need any kind of breaking changes. Uh, we feel like Gateway Class, Gateway, and HTTP Route all meet that criteria. Uh, unfortunately, some other resources are not quite there yet. Reference Policy, TCP Route, TLS Route, and UDP Route. We're working to get them there, but they're not quite there. But we are expecting that Gateway Class, HTTP Route, and Gateway are going to make it to beta in the next couple weeks. There's one more thing. You, I I've kind of haven't mentioned this much, but this API is built on CRDs. We live outside of the Kubernetes release cycle. Nick's going to talk a lot more about what that means. But one key thing is that that means we don't have feature gates. If you've used upstream Kubernetes before, you may be familiar with a concept called feature gates, where when you add a new field, it starts in alpha. You can opt in with a very specific feature gate, and then it gets to beta, and then it gets to GA. We, we don't have that concept. We have CRDs, and after talking it through with a few different SIGs, this is what we came up with. Uh, stable channel is what you'd expect. It's the resources that have graduated to beta and all, fe all fields that are not considered experimental. But experimental is kind of that playground where we start with new things. We have alpha resources. We have new fields that we're adding that we think are promising, but we're not quite confident enough to graduate to, to stable quite yet. So everything starts in experimental. Some stuff graduates to stable and some stuff disappears from experimental. Uh, so if you want the most stable experience, just install the stable CRDs. But if you want a new feature, if you want to test out some new thing, you can ins install a, an experimental set of CRDs, which will always be a superset of what's in stable. I guess, uh, can you go back to that yeah. slide for a sec? So there's a couple of things I wanted to add to that that I just thought of. <laughs> um, so uh, notably, you probably noticed that uh, the reference policy is still in alpha. Um, as of the, the next version. This is all as of the 050. Um, reference policy is still in alpha, which means that you won't be able to make cross namespace backend references or refer to secrets that are not in the same namespace as a HTTP route. Yep. Those both require reference policy to be done safely. Because reference policy won't be alpha, if you're only using stable, you just won't be able to do it. There's no mechanism to do it, right? So just wanted to call that out. Um, it, it's still like the gateway API with the, the resources we're moving to beta is still perfectly functional. It's just that it's a bit less, you can't do some more complicated stuff. We are hoping to get reference policy in really soon, but like that's going to be another round of API review and we didn't want to block um, that on having yeah. to figure out a new name. Like, you know, I'm sure all of you have tried to name something before. It's really hard. It's even more hard when you're implementing an open spec that a million people are going to have, different people have to implement. The bike shedding is crazy. Uh, so, yeah, so it's really important that we get that right, but at the same time, we didn't want to block some resources going to beta for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, want, I should call out reference policy is, is far and away the closest to graduating yeah. of the ones that aren't yet. It already has conformance tests in place. It's, we're in a pretty good spot. We just didn't quite make the cut. Yeah, but. because of the rename thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, let's uh, swap out. So, yeah, look, Rob mentioned, you know, we're really the first official uh, Kubernetes API to be built with CIDs. We're the first ones to be doing this API review process. Um, you know, with, a CI, with CRDs as opposed to, um, as opposed to you know, just doing it in the, uh, in the core and having doing, uh, using feature gates. That's why we've got all of the sort of fancy versioning and the conformance levels and a, bu and a bunch of other stuff, is we're trying to make sure that 
this feels as close as we can manage to the experience of using upstream, right? But it's delivered with CID, so there's just stuff that's got to be different. So here's some of the so, so, some of the things that are good, right? Let's go pros and cons. First, we're not tied to the Kubernetes release cycle, right? We can cut a release anytime we like. We don't have to wait for the next round of you know uh, of everything and be and also more importantly be tying up c upstream resources talking about these APIs when they're not we don't, don't need to be. Um, you don't need to know all of Kubernetes because we're, it's, it's a set of CRDs and associated webhook. Like it, you don't need to know as much about the rest of Kubernetes to be able to contribute. So you know, like we said, please come contribute. <laughs> um, I, I, I would hope you should all be pretty familiar with how you go about installing CRDs and using them and all that sort of stuff. Um, and we are making sure the webhook validation is required for you to pass conformance. Um, well, it will be required for you to pass conformance. Um, the, currently, we don't have the conformance test yet, but we will be adding conformance tests that will test that the, the bits we are checking for in the webhook uh, get rejected. Um, you know, and because there's some stuff in the webhook that we're using the webhook to protect you against uh, you know serious safety errors and some uh, security problems and stuff like that. So it's really important that that gets implemented. And but yeah. The, the big part here is that we're part of the Kubernetes IO API group. That's intended to signal to all of you that this is a real thing. This is an upstream API. This is safe to use once it's you know once it, once it has reached your desired stability level. It's it's safe to use. Like it's not going anywhere. It's not some company doing it. This is an upstream uh, thing. However, it's had some you know it's made some things really hard. Um, we're the first person. We're the first people to do this. So no, there's no prior art. No one else has done this before. We've got to figure out all of this stuff. And hopefully do it in a way that other people will be able to copy, uh, you know, and and make the life easier for other people. Um, you know, we've had to reinvent all the functionality from the upstream release engineering about feature flags and you know how we how we actually do our features and cut bundles and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, because we don't have feature flags. Um, the API version, that is the V1 Alpha one, it's just too coarse grained for what we're trying to do. So we've had to add the stuff about conformance levels on a per, per field basis and the stable and experimental tracks in order to be able to slice that up as finely as we need to. And yeah, lastly, designing an API to cover this enormous set of use cases is really, really hard. Um, and so it's taking us, you know, it's taking us two years just to get even close to beta for some resources. You know, like, and so, but the reason we've taken so long is we really want to make sure we're getting this right. You know, like, we only get one shot at doing this again. You know, like, we don't want to end up with a situation like Ingress where where it's just not specific enough. And so we're erring on the side of over-specifying rather than under-specifying. Okay, so I want to run through a few quick examples here. I will try and keep this super quick so we have some time for questions. Um, okay, this is a simple HTTP route, right? So most of this should look pretty similar to you if, if you've done uh, Ingress before. You know, like you've got a host name, you've got some rules, you've got some matches, um, you've got various types of paths and stuff, and then you've got backends, right? So this is basically Ingress pretty much with some extra stuff. Some extra magic, maybe is a better way to say it. Um, okay, so that's, and that extra magic is stuff like this, where it's the advanced bits. This is just the rule section from that object. But you can see, so you can do header matching, query matching, path matching, method matching, and these are anded together. So that means that this my service two is going to get only things that have it, the exact header set, the exact query param set, the path, the path exactly right, and the method, and the method is get, right? So that's an and set. So that means that you can get hyper specific about what goes to where. Um, a lot of this stuff was possible with Ingress via via different implementations, and they all had either their own CID. I mean, that's what I did on that's what we did on Contour. Or you had to do like a million annotations on your Ingress and hope that you know they were they were relatively portable. So the whole point here is this this config is portable, right? Like any any implementation that implements HTTP route and implements the extended bits of HTTP route will work. You should be able to pick this up. And move it across to another implementation, and it'll just work. TM. <laughs> yeah, well, should. Uh, but that's what the conformance tests are for, right? Like the whole idea is, if they are both conformant implementations, then they will pass the tests, and you can be confident that everything will work. So, also we got filters. So some of these. Uh, so request mirror is actually a uh, extended uh, HTTP filter. Uh, request header modifier is a. I think it's that, extended to. That's extended to, yeah. I think yeah. there is one of the other ones is core. Uh, yeah. yeah. Redirect. Yeah, redirect is core. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, this one is a pretty simple thing. You can, you know, 
Uh, you can modify headers, you can add, set, or remove headers. Um, you can send uh, a mirror of the traffic off to another service. Um, you know, and if none, none of those get hit, then you go to the, to the standard backend. Um, okay, so this is again what Rob was talking about. This is, how, this is a little bit more detail about how the cross namespace thing. I wanted to talk a little bit more about this because this cross namespace thing is a super tricky problem to solve. So many things in Kubernetes are built around the idea that namespaces are isolated, creating references between uh, namespaces that, are not extreme, that you're not extremely careful with is a huge, massive, gaping security hole, right? Like, uh, this is why, like, Contour doesn't support external name services for this reason, because it, it allows you to work around namespace isolation. Um, there are other, there have been other problems uh, with, like, endpoints and stuff like that that allow you to work around namespace isolation. So we wanted to be super careful here that, that we're being very careful to keep these namespaces isolated, except insofar as there has been agreement between the two parties that it should be allowed. And that's what this is aimed to do. The person who owns the gateway has said, I will allow routes to attach from this selector. Now, they could be just like, ah, I don't care. It's going to be all. You know, any, any namespace, no problems. It's all fine. But they have the option of doing that, right? And then the, the HTTP route has the, uh, you know, specific is the owner of the HTTP route is the one who selects which gateway they want to attach to. And we chose not to do a label selector or something like that there, so that it is a definite action, and you as a HTTP route owner have to pick which one. It is a list, so if you want to have your uh, HTTP route owned by two gateways, that's fine. So if you are moving your HTTP route between gateways, say you want to try out like fancy new gateway implementation, you just point it at two gateways, and both of those implementations should take the same config and end up with the same result, right? So, but the, the important part here is it's a, it's a two-party transaction, right? Like, one party says, I'll allow it, one party says, I want to do it, right? And so that's the same with the reference policy, and that's why, that's why we have it, right? So in the case that you're doing, like, the back-end refs thing, you know, we do have the field in there that you can do a namespace. Unless you have a reference policy, the, your implementation must reject uh, a cross-namespace reference like this. Um, and that is because the, otherwise I could use this to refer to super secure service that I just happen to know about in some other namespace and bada bing bada boom, I am now, you know, representing the, the billing system out of line on, you know, some other 100% not the billing system owned HTTP route, right? So, so that's, that's the idea here is there's a two, again, there's a two-way handshake. We've got the HTTP route owner has said, yeah, um, I want to point this to a service, but then the service owner has to say, that is okay. I allow that by saying services are allowed to be pointed to by HTTP routes in the prod namespace. Notably, you don't have to specify both of these. You can only specify, you can say all HTTP routes in any namespace or only or any object in particular namespaces, right? <coughs> or you can say all, all routes in all namespaces, right? Like, or all things. So what I, the two use cases we talked about um, is the, um, is, as it says, backend ref, but the other one is the classic, you want to keep your key pairs in a namespace that only the people who own the key pairs to www.mycompany.com should, you know, should be able to see the private key for that, for that cert, obviously. And so like, that's, that's what this is, is all aimed at doing. Obviously, like I said, this is not going to be in 050 because it won't be beta. It will be in the experimental track. Okay, so we talked, we talked a little bit about the graduation criteria, this is what they are. We've got the conformance test coverage, we have multiple conformant implementations, that is multiple implementations that are passing the conformance test, um, and there's, you know, we, there's multiple implementations that are actually being used, like there's no point us saying, hey, you pass the conformance test if no one's using it, um, and that we need to leave it for at least six months as a beta API before we go to GA. Um, I think six months is probably gonna turn out to be a little uh, aggressive, we're probably going to want to leave it for longer than that. But what we're really aiming to do is just to make sure, 100% sure that there's nothing more we need to add. Because once we go to GA, that is our commitment to all of you that this thing is never going to change, ever. Like, GA is forever. Like, and so, you know, the, we really want to make sure that if it's going to be forever, it's really what we want. So, well, this is all the stuff we're working on. Um, more conformance tests. Improved, like, uh, improve UX through fixing up the status. Right now, um, you know, the status is a little tricky to understand. It can be a bit weird. There's some edge cases that aren't handled very well. Um, 
And so we're really trying to just make that really consistent and really straightforward for you all to understand. My, my personal goal is that if you are a HTTP route owner, you should only need to look at your HTTP route to know if, some, if everything is working. Like you shouldn't need to go and find out what gateway you're pointing to and check that the gateway is okay. You should just be able to look at the gateway, at your route, and that's the, that's, where you need, that's the only thing you need to know. Um, we've got some new features, as Rob mentioned, route delegation. Um, that's, you know, we did some work on this in Contour, um, and other people have done similar ideas. That's the idea where you can break up your route configuration and have a route sort of allow another route to attach. So you, in the same way that a gateway allows routes to attach, your route can include, instead of a backend, an allowed route standard itself is the sort of the rough design for now. Um, something like that. Um, and the idea there is that it just lets you break apart things and have different teams own different parts of the config in the same way that a different team could own the route to the gateway. Exactly the same way. Um, GRPC route is being implemented. Uh, the GEP, the design for this has been, you know, we approved it. Um, yeah, we're in the process of uh, implementing it. Um, yeah, we really want to do more layer four stuff. So those of you who are doing TCP stuff and UDP stuff, um, I'd really, yeah, we really, really need use cases and to talk about it. Um, most implementations that we're talking to at the moment are, are proxies, not uh, like load balancers, like not true load balancers. So they're actually terminating sessions and restarting them. And that has big implications for like TCP route and UDP route and how viable they are. Um, I would really like to talk to people who are okay with that and people who are not okay with that and what they want to see. Um, so we really desperately need use cases for those layer four things. That's one of the reasons they're still in alpha. We just don't have enough information about what's really needed there. Um, yeah, and we're looking at some uh, more wild uh, use cases like uh, having, a mesh, so having a mesh object instead of a gateway object. So instead of just, in that case, your routes are kind of describing what happens east-west instead of what happens north-south, right? So, and so the, the mesh object then would describe like how everything fits together, not how you get in and out of the cluster. Um, egress use cases, um, we've started talking about this. Um, we know people need it, um, but I'm, I'm worried that the constructs we have at the moment don't fit well for egress, so I really want to spend some time with people who need this to talk about the use cases. Again, there's that thing, oh yeah, we need more use cases. Always need more use cases. Um, and uh, cluster IP, it's a real stretch goal, but it, it was once mentioned, I had, I had to add it to the slide, but it was once mentioned <laughs> that maybe we could have a gateway class cluster IP. Right. We'll see. Uh, just yeah. throwing it out there in case that interests anyone. <laughs> yeah, so if you do want any of this stuff that you do want, you know, come to us, talk to us about it, log an issue, and we can talk about it. Like all of, pretty, most things are on the table at the moment because it's sort of so early days. And if you've got use cases you need addressed, then we would love to do them. Um, lastly, yeah, please get involved, <laughs> just like I've been saying. Um, at the weekly community meetings are on Monday specific time, that's US specific time. I am in Australia, so it's my Tuesday morning. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I, can't, I can't do the time zone math in my head, I'm sorry, to tell you what time it would be in uh, Central European time. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the, we do one, one meeting a week at the moment. Um, if, you need, if you all need it, we can talk about like standing up alternating meetings and stuff like that. Right now, we just don't have enough people to, to need it. Um, and yeah, contributors from all backgrounds welcome. Like I said, we desperately need use cases. So if you are interested in contributing to an upstream thing that you're probably going to end up using, please, please come and tell us about what you're trying to do. If you are an implementer implementing this API, please come and tell us what your experience about was like implementing it. Like we need to know, like what have we missed? What's hard to implement? Like what was easy? Like the, the, the plus ones are nice too. Um, but yeah, this is our website, gatewayapi.sigs.kates.io. We are at uh, SIG Network Gate Gateway API in uh, Kubernetes Slack uh, and on GitHub right there. That's it. Do we have any time for questions? How am I Two doing? minutes. Two minutes. Do we have any uh, virtual questions? Can we get the, uh, yep. <laughs> Can we get the um, tech crew, no? No, they don't seem to be in there. Okay. We'll work on that. Oh, oh uh, sorry. cool. Uh, there we go, yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so questions in the room. And do wait for the mic because we want them on the live stream. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I think, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. 
I don't sure I am, uh, understand. This is will be a part of Kubernetes. If I have a Kubernetes cluster in the latest version, does HTTP route include? And if yes, does it come to replace ingress? Does the, the future plan is that ingress will be deprecated and there is no resource named ingress in Kubernetes? That, that's, that's a great question. Uh, ingress is around to stay. Ingress is the simple API. It works for a large portion of the community. This is the advanced API. Uh, Ingress will be around indefinitely. Uh, it is a GA API, what Nick said earlier, GA is forever. Uh, Gateway API is a new API. Uh, it, as, as Nick mentioned, this is something like that is a CRD. It's not dependent on the latest version of Kubernetes. You could take these CRDs and install them in a 1.16 cluster. Uh, but so it is definitely not included as part of your Kubernetes install. Yeah. You will need to in, you will need to install the CRD manifest plus the webhook um, to be able to get the functionality. Does it, does there is a use case that I should use Ingress and not HTTP route because I don't yeah. I don't see if any you, situation. If you to don't need ingress. yeah if you don't need um, the advanced functionality that we talked about with HTTP route yes you absolutely should use Ingress. Uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, that's okay. That's okay. I, I want just to use a, a API gateway, not use Ingress any anymore, any time. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So um so the I think the the reason to use the gateway API is that you have advanced functionality that is not addressed by Ingress. You know, and so I mean we're hoping that that we can make the f API so good that, that you don't want to use Ingress, right? Like that it's simple enough to use and easy enough to use that you can just uh you know that you can that you want to use the gateway API instead. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thanks. And we're at time, so if you want to leave, please do so quietly, but we'll continue taking a few questions. And I'll come to you. Hi, thank you for the conference. So, a uh, question is about um, I have two questions about Igress. I find it a um, very interesting use case, but also very challenging to attract the traffic from the CNI because it's also CNI dependent. That's one question. And the second question is, could you elaborate on what you meant with cluster IP, please? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear the second part. Yeah, I, I didn't get what you meant with cluster IP. What, what, what is the use oh. case you are looking yeah, at? Yeah, I, I, I can cover that one. This, this is way pie in the sky theoretical. We, haven't, we don't know what it would look like. It's just, hey, could we, could we use these API constructs to represent the cluster IP routing we have today with service. That's and maybe right. service becomes some, a little simpler. I, d I don't know, this is like years in the future, theoretical. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so, so you were saying about that you're, you're worried about getting traffic from the CNI yeah. with the ingress, yeah? How would you expect to attract the traffic from the CNI? Right, so um, usually we're Can actually kind of, that? <laughs> yeah. I think we actually kind of expect that um, people will eventually use like a sort of stacked gateway system. Like if you have an ingress controller that is taking HTTP routes, it may actually use a uh, gateway, like another gateway that has TCP routes to sort of expose the, to do the functionality that a load balancer, a, a service of type load balancer does today. Uh, and so right, right now, if you install an ingress controller, a lot of the time it's actually using a service of type load balancer under the hood to create a load balancer to expose the thing that's actually doing the ingress for you. And we actually anticipate that that'll stick around. I mean, that'll still be there, but eventually people will probably end up using like an ingress ga level gateway and a sort of layer four level gateway. Um, does that answer your question? And okay. Okay, no worries. They'll dive we'll in more about later. later. Yeah, I think <laughs> we had uh, so well, another question over here. And while I get to you, uh, the only question online is where can I get the PowerPoint from? So I think okay. we'll, we'll upload it. Uh, we will, right after we will this. upload it to, to this okay. right after. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Um, so yeah, you're the first project to use CRDs. Um, are you like? Obviously, you've had like the teething problems and like the first project pro problems. Um, do you see this as going to become like a more common thing? I quite like the idea yeah. of the yes. sort of module. Um, yeah, it's a more modular element of uh, implementing things in Kubernetes, um, yeah. like getting involved in it. So, yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry, I'm, no, I'm no, basically okay. That's, finished. Uh, sorry, the the admin network policy API is one that is uh, following in our footsteps. 
Uh, so another project under SIG Network that is working towards a CRD-based API. That's, that's a great question. There, there are definitely, it's not all perfect yet, uh, but we are trying to blaze a path that makes it easier for others to come. We are trying to pull things out of core and make them more modular, exactly yeah. like what you're saying. I tell you, I mean, there's, a, there's an ongoing effort to pull things out of the tree for the main Kubernetes and to make it so, you know, ideally everything in Kubernetes should end, like main Kubernetes should be GA and not changing very often. That will make all of our lives easier when it comes time to upgrade, right? Like the more we can pull out of the tree, the better off we'll all be. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And I believe there was one more question. Up, up here. Okay, yep. yes. That'll be our last question for now. So you talked about Envoy, right? Uh, so the only way it's going to work is Envoy with Istio. The Istio control plane will translate gateway APIs into something Envoy understands, and Envoy will then implement yeah, it. Yeah, so Istio, so Istio is one of the implementations that supports this. Istio takes the gateway, uh, the gateway API objects and turns them into config that it passes to its Envoys. So um, Envoy itself is not modified to understand gateway APIs? No, so yeah. Envoy itself doesn't need to be changed because Envoy is configured with the XDS, the XDS uh, APIs, right. and so Anything that you can write, so Envoy Gateway is all about uh, take, writing a separate thing that doesn't need Istio that can take uh, Kubernetes Gateway APIs and turn them into Envoy Config and configure your Envoys. Yeah. Um, other people, you know, other implementations, Ingress controllers use Nginx. Um, you know, other load balancers like uh, I think HJProxy and MetalOB have talked about um, yep. supporting the Gateway API. The idea is that anybody can use these constructs to sort of describe any sort, any level of that functionality and it will work. And then if you move to someone else who supports a similar level of functionality, then you can just switch your config over and it should just work, Dan. Uh, do you know that Istio will take the exact same spec and, and... Yes, that's the whole idea of the API, yep. yes. Yep. Istio already supports the gateway API, yes. Yep. Actually, I said that would be the last one, but we got one more online, so yep. I'll throw it in here. Do you use a reference implementation like Kubernetes uh, Nginx Ingress? We so. We, don't, we do not have a reference implementation. We don't have any plans to have a, a single standard implementation. Uh, yep. There are, you know, there may be, you know, like Nginx Ingress, there may be one that is widely su supported in the community in the future that, that kind of becomes the de facto one that we reference, but that does not exist today. Yeah, and we do not, we do not ever plan to anoint like the one true gateway API yep. implementation. The, the idea is the conformance tests are the source of truth. If you pass the conformance tests, you're a conformant gateway API implementation no matter who you are. Yep. And we are planning to have like a bit of a feedback loop where you will be able to like take your implementation, do something with the, run the conformance tests, pass them back to us and we will be able to have a canonical list of these implementations, pass the conformance tests on this date at this level and blah, 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 blah. The same as you do for upstream conformance. You know, you get like a sticker that says you are an up, uh, a conformant Kubernetes distro, right? Same idea. Alrighty, thank you. Well, mm. yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll be around for.